you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I'd have had another uh, Bible study ready for tonight that I wrote a couple of weeks ago, uh, but Sunday, a couple of people asked me, uh, they just said, uh, I was hoping you'd just go all the way down through the rest of the prodigal son, and I said, well, I run out of time, you know, so I thought, well, I'll just, uh, Monday morning when I came in, I prayed about it, and the Lord said, uh, why don't you just finish that sermon up, and that's what we're going to do tonight. Tonight, I want to talk to you about an attitude adjustment, an attitude adjustment. And again, folks, <laughs> you know, nobody's perfect. Uh, there are times in our lives, you know, that we kind of get in, uh, you, may, you, you might say a slump or, you know, uh, some people use different words, you know, I'm going through the motions or, you know, something like that. But the key, even, even in depression, uh, you know, there are times you can see examples in the Bible of prophet, you know, that uh, sunk into depression. And the key, folks, is not staying there. First, you've got to recognize it, uh, that you're in, you know, just kind of a down time in your life. And then uh, only you can do something about it. Uh, but I want to pick right up in chap uh, chapter 15, verse 25. Uh, we quit on 24 uh, this past Sunday morning, and, uh, you know, when there's a parable, I told you it was, you know, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, and I want to say right off the bat, when you look at his older son, this is my opinion, uh, I believe he was referring to the scribes and the Pharisees, and if you look down through here and see the way he reacted, uh, you will see that, so I wanted to just uh, give you a, uh, you know, just a heads up there, all right? Verse 25, now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he obviously was out working. Uh, he was there. Uh, you know, you could depend on him, but he had no idea, um, you know, depending how how big their their place was, uh, you know, fields and, you know, with different sheep and things like that. Uh, he could be way away from the house and did not realize his younger brother had come home. Verse 26, so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant, which tell me that doesn't happen very often. Something, you know, with music playing and everybody being happy and all this going on, uh, that wasn't a regular occurrence at his house. And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he re received him safe and sound, your father, has, uh, your father has killed the fatted calf. So, uh, again, this servant was just simply telling the older brother what had happened. And you can just see by his reaction here, folks, you know, truly, when you see that safe and sound, his brother should have been excited about that. His brother should have been uh, happy about that. All right, but notice the first part of verse 28, but he was angry. He was angry. Now, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, why is this brother angry? Okay, his, his younger brother, uh, for whatever reason, we, we talked about that, went away uh, his dad did not know if he was dead or alive. Um, you know, there was probably some concern on the part of his father, but uh, just his first reaction wasn't a good reaction. And what I learn in life, and I know I say this all the time, but you have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Okay, because you're gonna you're gonna hear the older brother just kind of go off on him, okay? And everything he says is true, okay? But that doesn't mean, because we have to get back to the word forgiveness, all right? Forgiveness. We are all sinners. We all mess up. We all make some bad choices at times. But we even said on Sunday, you know, that father, that, that earthly father was a picture of our heavenly father, all right, that loves us. 
uh, unconditionally and, and takes care of us. And it says, but he was angry and would not go in. Now, does that sound like a grown man there? <laughs> it sounds like a child, okay? And anger, uh, uh, folks, the Bible, especially in Proverbs, it says get away from an angry man because here's what's going to happen. One day you're going to be a part of that anger, okay? And I, you know, uh, you know, when girls or, you know, ladies come and talk to me about, you know, everything's okay with this guy we've been dating everything, but he has an anger problem. Boy, I'm, I tell you, I'm, I'm just real frank with them. Hey, you, you need to find someone else, all right? It, I mean, I understand you can get professional help, okay? And I'm all for that. But, boy, I've seen the opposite side of that, and it is not good. Uh, so he was angry. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, the, the, older guy was, the older brother was mad. Okay, he wasn't just trying to talk him into it. All right, he was pleading. He was just saying, man, I wish you wouldn't feel that way. I, you know, I wish you'd come in. This is supposed to be a happy time. I can see this conversation going on between them. Hold your finger there and go to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 15. Rejoice with those rejoice who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And folks, we're talking about a Christian reaction to these things. All right? This older brother should have been rejoicing. All right? But what did he do? He, he had an attitude. And the attitude was not good. And, and, folks, attitude is so important. It's like somebody getting upset, and you're looking at them, and you know they're upset, and they say, I know you're upset. No, I'm not. You know, they just, you could just tell when people are upset. And so it's obvious that older brother was upset. What he should have been doing, not only as a brother, okay, but as a Christian, what he should have been doing is rejoicing, okay? His brother came home. His father was excited about seeing him. And we as Christians need to do that. Uh, those who are happy and those who, you know, who are rejoicing, man, we need to get happy with them. And then the opposite side is that, and, we, and weep with those who get weep. All right? If this younger brother would have been killed in some way, all right, the right thing to do would have been weeping with this father also. And I think it would have been a different thing. Okay, but he wasn't thinking about his brother. He was thinking about himself, himself. And it says, be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And you'll see him, him just in a minute going, I, 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 I did this. Okay, so he was, you know, just basically talking about how good he was and how worthless his brother was. Do not be wise in your own opinion, okay? And, and folks, we need to realize uh, that uh, we need to stay humble in what we do, and there are some times that our opinion is not the right opinion. It is not the godly opinion. opinion. And many times, if we gently talk to people in this, in this mood or in this a reaction, we can help them see that this is not, you know, a soft answer, turn away wrath, Proverbs 15, 1 says. Then it says, repay no one evil for evil, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. So what was his older brother thinking? I'm not speaking to him. I'm not speaking to dad. I'm not talking to anyone, okay? They, he felt wronged in this acceptance and what uh, was going on. But folks, uh, you know, when you look at the Bible and what we said, you know, he was lost, and now he is found. He's back home. He came home, you know, and, and he should have, uh, you know, had a different reaction to his brother coming home. And I love this part of it. As much as depends on you, I got news for you. It totally depends on you. I mean, I understand the God factor and all that, but we can change 
and attitude. We can help the situation by trying to be a peacemaker. And folks, that's what his dad was trying to do. He was trying to be a peacemaker. And folks, we need to be peacemakers in all that we do. So look at this again now in verse 29. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and you never gave me a goat that I may make, may make merry with my friend. Now, I would, I would just almost want to question what is coming out of his mouth. Notice carefully, he used the word I three times. I, I have been serving you, and I've never transgressed. You know, that's almost saying, you know, I'm perfect. I've never done anything wrong. And, you know, I know how teenage boys are. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, no, nah, I don't know about that one. If that's not good enough, your commandment at any time. And he just said that everything that you've asked me to do, I've done. Now, folks, I'm just telling you, I, I, you know, to me, the issue here becomes self-righteousness, okay? Self-righteousness. He was seeing himself better than he really was. The older brother had done the right thing. And folks, we as Christians need to do the right thing, but we need to also do the right thing with the right attitude. The older brother should have been happy about his younger brother coming home, but he wasn't. The older brother should have went out and joined in the festivities, but he didn't, okay? So he gets this idea that, you know, I've been wronged, okay? I've done everything you've asked me to do, which again, I would, I would say that's probably not a true statement. So you can see this older brother almost like, uh, I don't know if you've ever been around people that try to give you their spiritual resume tell you everything that they have done for the Lord and, and you know, all that. And, and folks, it's not about us, okay? Life is not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about, you know, uh, obeying what the Bible says. It's about being right. Now, we're not talking about just a Christian brother here. We're talking about blood brothers here. And if he should have forgiven anyone, he, you know, and, and folks, I understand Family sometimes is the one that hurts you the most. I understand that. But we still have to do what Jesus would do. That's going to be the key there. All right? And this, this guy, the, the, older, um, the older brother, did not do what was right. And, you know, the never gave me a goat and I make merry with my friends, I would say, just in logically thinking, it never came up. Okay, I, I really believe the father would have done that if it had come up before, but I believe it never came up. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at Ephesians 6, verse 5. Bond servants, and you can say slaves there, and you can say workers there. Okay, workers, workers, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. Okay, so the right thing for this older brother to do was what he did. I mean, he wasn't doing anything above and beyond, okay? His father hired him. His father, uh, you, know, you know, put a roof over his head, pays his meal, you know, pays for his meals and did all these things with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart. And here's where I say, here's the problem with the older brother. He had a heart problem, okay? He said the right things. He even did the right things, okay? But when it come down to really probably jealousy, probably envy, probably, uh, you know, the word that I use Sunday, uh, what was the word I used? Enablement, okay? He thought his father owed him something, okay? And folks, I'm just telling you, I said it Sunday and I'll say it again tonight, God owes us nothing, folks. If he has saved you, he has given you eternal life and he's given you everything. And everything else, folks, is just good stuff. I mean, he blesses us. But he had this idea 
And, and folks, his heart was not right with the Lord because of the attitude and his actions. With sincerity of heart as unto Christ. And you know what this means about even the workforce? Okay, I understand there are people that don't really like their job. Okay, if they could be doing something else, they would be doing that. But when you are being paid for, you know, uh, for, for working, okay, when you get a wage, part of your job is to be a good worker, to, to earn your pay, to be honest in all that you are doing. And so not, not, not as I service as man's pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Notice twice he says here about the heart. Folks, the heart, all the issues of life come from the heart. Because we can think something, but what's deep inside of us is in our hearts, and eventually that's going to come out. And when it comes to attitude, I can say the right thing, okay? I can act like it doesn't make me mad when deep inside it really just boils me. And the key is the heart. Look what it says. From the heart, with a good will, doing service as unto the Lord. Okay, and I know in my job, I mean, it's easy to say I'm working for the Lord because I'm preaching. But no matter where you work, you think about this. I know you have an employer, but you are working unto God. You need to be a good workman and a, a work lady because you are a Christian, because you set an example, because this is important to God. As unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same thing from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And he's just simply saying, folks, the, your work ethic shows your integrity. Your work ethic shows what's in your heart. And we need to be Christians' examples in everything that we do. So we see... Hey, look at my resume. Look at what I've done. Look at what I've done. And then look at verse 30. But as soon as his, this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you've killed the fatted calf. So what was he trying to do? He took the blame off himself. He acted as if he had no sin, and he pointed out the sin of others. It's kind of like my grandma always used to tell me, when you point the finger at somebody, there's three pointing back at you. I mean, my grandmother was pretty wise about that. And folks, why do we point out somebody else's sin? Let's just be honest here, okay? Why? So it'll deflect our shortcomings and sins. We don't want people talking about our sins, but yet sometimes we talk about other sins. And this is what the older brother was doing. He was deflecting, saying, I'm the good guy here. I've never done nothing wrong. I've always been here. I've done that. And folks, again, it's not about I. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about a good work ethic. It's about uh, unity in a family. It's about loving, even the unlovable. Okay? Because there's times in our life, now you may, I know we're in church, but there's times in our life, I know there's times in my life that I'm not really lovable, okay? I'm just, I'm just cranky sometimes. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> and we all get there sometimes. But folks, we don't have to live there is my point, okay? And there are times when the Holy Spirit just says, uh, you know, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that. And that's the time when I need to repent and get right with the Lord. Now look at verse 30. But as soon as this son of yours came, devour, devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said unto him, this is the father, son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. See, his, his father was just being totally honest with him. If you would have asked me, to ask your friends over. If you would just said something about wanting to kill the calf. If you would just, you know, wanted a vacation or some time off, I would have done that. And folks, I think this father is sincere in what he's saying. Okay, folks, our heavenly father has done so much for us. So much. And I'm telling you, uh, I was talking to one of our men yesterday. We were just visiting and... I just said this. I just said, I am telling you, 
if, if I was to leave this world today, I feel like I would have done everything that God has asked me to do, and I am totally content with that. Okay? And folks, to be at peace with others, here's what I'm trying to say. You have to be at peace with yourself. Okay? We have flaws. Nobody's perfect. We, we say things. Sometimes we say things, and I know I do it. As soon as it comes out of my mouth, I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Folks, we have to learn that there's forgiveness from God, and, and we need to keep our relationships Folks, especially with our brothers and sisters. I'm talking about our blood family. Okay, we need to, as much as depends on us, keep those relationships, uh, you know, pleasing to God. Verse 32, and it was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And again, it's like I said on Sunday, you know, this this younger brother went, and man, he did. He partied. He wasted all the money from his father's. He did some things that weren't right, but he realized once he was broke, once he was in the pig pens, he, he was working and feeding swine. And if you remember, he said, I am so hungry that even the swine food looked good. He hit rock bottom. And I'm telling you, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom to start up and what what his father was trying to say your brother was near death your brother was making wrong choices and the part i believe it dead here I, I don't just think physically dead i think he was talking about being spiritually that way okay he was chasing the wind and he had and he did in in probably both ways had a near-death experience but I love that word that we talked about Sunday, but he came to himself. Okay, the younger brother realized, this is not what I want for my life. This is not me. This is not what uh, my father had taught me. This is not what I, this is not the way I want to end my life. And he came back home. He was dead and is alive. He was lost and he was found folks i am telling you uh you know the older brother did not rejoice uh, when his brother came home the older brother bragged on himself uh you know to even to his father and his older brother did not love or forgive his brother and folks uh you know the attitude adjustment uh, only you can change your attitude and you know what a lot of your attitude is about it's about outlook it's about outlook, okay? It's, it's seeing things through the eyes of Jesus. What would Jesus have done? I'm telling you, he'd, he'd have welcomed them back. I mean, the Father was a perfect example of Jesus, what Jesus would do. He'd put a ring on his finger. He'd kill the fatted calf. He would, you know, uh, throw a big party in fellowship and just welcome him home. Because folks, if you think about it, uh, in, you know, before we got saved, we all were prodigal sons and daughters. We were uh, not in a right relationship with God, but God forgave us, and God forgave us of our sins, and uh, he put us in right standing with him because we believed in Jesus Christ. I want to go to Luke 15. Just go back to 1510. He's talking about the lost sheep here. And then he was talking about the lost coin. And verse 10 says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. See, the younger brother repented. And folks, when somebody tries to come clean, when somebody tries to get right with God, when somebody who had been struggling and made wrong choices, we need to be there with open arms to welcome them home because you think about it folks people know whether you want them there or not people sense whether you are sincere in what you are doing and i'm just simply saying there's times in our life that man we need we need to tell god you know about our attitude and i'm, I'm speaking about me too here okay god i'm wrong god i'm sorry 
God, please forgive me. And I'm telling you, that older brother uh, could have made things a lot easier for himself, and that old brother could have mend uh, some fences uh, that were torn down. So I pray when the Holy Spirit, and it will, folks, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. If you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit will tell you, you know what, that's not right. What this older brother did was not right. And God is there. God would forgive him. And, and again, the thing about you know, this story is, I don't know how it ended. You know, I, it doesn't say what happened after that. But all I know is we can make a huge difference in people's lives when we have the right attitude. And I'll tell you this, I'm just being honest here, I do not like to be around negative people, okay? They, they just pull you down. It's, you know, woe is me and, you know, uh, the old hee-haw show, <laughs> you think about it, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. My father made us watch that every Saturday night at 6 o'clock, and I still have it memorized. Uh, yes, I want to be around people that love God, and I want to be around people that accept people that are not like me and that are forgiving and uh, that we can just, man, all rejoice uh, together. Father, thank you so much for this night. And God, I thank you for the parable of the lost son and the prodigal son. I thank you, Lord, that uh, he did come home and God, I thank you that, God, you forgave him and his father forgave him. His father did the right thing. And, God, I just pray we as Christian brothers and sisters that we'll do the right thing. God, we've all run into people that have just, uh, you know, were destructive. They were self-destructive. And, God, I pray we wouldn't just blow them off or criticize or be ugly to them. God, I pray that we would encourage them and God, I thank you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can overcome any addiction and any problem that we have in our lives. God, we just thank you for the example of the Father. And God, I just pray that you just always uh, a, a check on our attitude. Man, attitude is everything. And so, God, I pray that we would be positive. Uh, we would share the truth of the Word of God with people. And God, I pray that we'd make a change. That, that Lord, when we need to change, we'll change. So, God, thank you for this uh, scripture. Thank you for this Bible study tonight. And, God, I pray you continue to bless our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.